In this lesson, we're going to talk about the continuously rasterize and collapse transformations switch. Okay, so I am going to be in my main composition for most of this lesson, so you can just go ahead and move over there with me. And the switch we're going to be talking about is this little switch that you see right there. Now this switch is one of the most important switches in After Effects. It can make your life way easier if you understand how it works. And it's one of those things that you may spend a lot of time trying to figure out a problem, and then you realize that all you had to do all along was just check this little switch. So the whole reason I'm bringing this up now is because I'm wanting to use a piece of text that we pre-composed in our earlier lesson. So if you come up here to our project panel and drill down through compositions, we're going to be using this dreams comp that we created. So go ahead and grab that and we'll drop this on our timeline just right there above those two shape layers. So we see that we get that little piece of text there that says dreams fulfilled. So now I'm going to move a little bit more forward in time. And I'm also going to drag this layer forward in time so that it's beginning at the same place that those two shape layers are beginning. So that's just gonna kind of group those together a little bit better. And now let's go ahead and scale this down and reposition it so that it kind of lives inside of our red circle. So I'm just gonna move that over here and We'll just grab that corner and hold shift to scale that down a little bit. And now I want to parent this layer to my shape layer. So the shape layer that is the red layer is that top one, shape layer two. So just go ahead and grab the dreams.ai comp one, grab the parent pick whip, and we'll drag it onto the shape layer two. Okay, so now if I am dragging through this, we see that we have a little bit of a problem. And that's because this comp is still not a 3D layer and our shape layer two is. So go ahead and turn on that 3D switch and that's gonna give you a little bit of a different result from what we had earlier. So now my piece of text is in a little bit of the wrong place. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that over and back up so that it's in the middle of the red solid. Okay, and we can maybe scale this up a little bit just to make it fit there a little bit better. And if I scrub through this now, you see that that fits just much better with the rest of my composition. And you can even maybe come in here and we might want to look at the keyframes that we have on this shape layer. And so we can do that just by hitting the U key with that layer selected. And I'm just gonna move there to that keyframe and then move that entire shape layer up just so that it's not overlapping with my um, big teal layer here quite so much and I'm able to read that text a little bit better because I want that to be readable above all. So now that looks just a little bit better and definitely is more readable. Now I can always reposition that text just a little bit there and it's still going to remain parented and continue to move with the layer that it's parented to. So let's go ahead now and go inside of this dreams.ai comp and we're just gonna do that by double clicking. And now I want to go ahead and toggle the transparency grid so that I can actually read this bit of text. So now I wanna talk to you about continuously rasterize and what that means for vector layers. Now this Dreams Fulfilled layer is a vector layer. It was created inside of Illustrator and it still has the Illustrator's vector information. So because it has that, when I scale this up, I will still be able to view this layer as a crisp layer that was created either inside of After Effects or inside of Illustrator, just as if it had never been scaled up past the point that it became fuzzy. So we can change that by using that this switch, this continuously rasterized switch. So with this scaled up now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that switch on. So go ahead and click that, and you see instantly that this text comes back into focus 
focus. So this is a very powerful tool for being able to create vector layers at any size, then bring them into After Effects and scale them as far up as you need to. Then you can just simply turn on this little switch and you're able to get all of that information back. So we've talked about this switch in relation to vector layers, but this is also the same switch for a comp layer and it does something completely different called collapse transformations. So let's go back out to our main composition and talk about collapse transformations there. Now first of all, because we scaled that text up inside of our composition, it became scaled up on the outside as well. So I'm going to go ahead and scale that back down to fit back into the middle of that circle. So that's just going to fit a little bit better and if we scrub through there that looks much better like that. Okay so now I want to talk about continuously rasterize. Okay so now I want to talk about collapse transformations and what that means for a comp layer. So we're going to go ahead and do that with my dreams.ai comp. So What's the difference between continuously rasterize and collapse transformations? For continuously rasterize, as we learned earlier, that's for a vector layer. Now, collapse transformations only applies to comp layers. So you want to make sure that if you're wanting to use all of those functions for continuously rasterize, you're applying it to a layer that has this little composition icon next to it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on now. And basically what's happening whenever I turn this on, you see that this has kind of moved out of position here. It's changing the order of operations. So what it's doing is it's looking inside of this composition for all of the information to be applied here on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and go back inside of this composition. And what's happening is all of the layers on the outside there are being recognized as 3D layers because we've turned on that 3D layer switch. But since we turned on collapse transformations, we are looking inside of that composition at this layer and it does not have its 3D layer switch turned on. So I'll go ahead and turn on that 3D switch and we'll come back out to our main composition and you see that now the camera is recognizing that 3D layer and it's back in position. So this is a really powerful tool. You can come into After Effects, create lots of different 3D style um, animations or compositions, and then bring them into a larger composition that has a camera, and use your collapse transformation switch, and you'll be able to view all of that 3D data. So that's a very powerful tool. Now, one of the other things that After Effects does with this collapse transformation switch is the way that it recognizes blending modes. So right now we haven't changed the blending mode at all for our text, but you notice that if I try to do it here on the outside of my dreams composition, I can't change it because it has this little line through it. So I can still drop it down and try to change it, but it still has the line even after I move that. And that's simply because we have to go inside of that composition where it's looking for the information. So I'll go ahead and double click that. And we can change our blending mode here. So let's go ahead and open up our blending mode comp. So I'm just going to right click there on the parent column and come down here and choose modes. And then we're going to change our mode from normal to multiply. And then we'll go back out to our main composition. So this doesn't look a lot different right now, but you can see that it is a little bit lighter than what it was earlier. So if you really want to be able to see a difference, I can actually go in there and change the color of that text. So maybe we'll apply a fill um, effect generate fill. So just go ahead and go up there to effect generate and we'll come down to fill and that's just going to change that to red. So I'll move it here to something like this, just a little bit of a lighter gray. And because it has that multiply blending mode, it's going to take the white information that's inside of this new uh, color that we've created. And we'll come back out to the main comp and you can see now that it looks much lighter out here. So the blending mode is 
only being affected if it's turned on inside of that composition. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe if you have a blending mode on a layer and then you pre-compose it, it's not going to look like it has that blending mode anymore until you turn on the collapse transformations switch. So in this lesson, we learn the difference between continuously rasterize and collapse transformations and when we need to use this powerful switch.